Okay, so here we are. Uh, so hello, I'm Chris. Uh, we are at the Alto Fab Lab, and today we are going to look at the Recontec 1312 CNC machine and basically how to set it up without covering much of uh, toolpaths, how to generate toolpaths with PCARV or Fusion 360, but just a basic setup. So you know how the CNC machine works, what are the different components of it, and that you can actually come here to the lab and not ask us necessarily for help because we might be busy with other things and you could just set it up yourself. So let's get going. Here on the CNC machine, so the most important part that you can see here, this, this one is the spindle. So these are for opening and closing the vacuum suction vents and the table is separated into the left and to the right side and for the left side you do this to close it and you do this to open it and the same goes for the right side and if there's a bigger object like a bigger uh, material that you that covers the whole machine the whole working bed of the machine then you would use both of them or maybe you just want to use the other side of the machine it depends on you so they're uh, they're smaller separations or smaller segments um, that can be taken into account. So these vents, uh, they are usually closed with these rubber thingies, so these rubber caps. And uh, depending on the size of your material, you might remove one or more of them. And if you're not using the other ones, then uh, you should keep them closed. Um, also, uh, as a part of the vacuum table, you have these rubber bands. And basically, you should uh, align the rubber bands so that so that they cover the area of the material. But this is also something that I'm going to show you later. And uh, yeah, so another thing about a vacuum table is that there is a small meter with red and green areas. Uh, so if the meter, when you turn on the vacuum, uh, the vacuum suction device, then the meter uh, is going to move either to red or green areas. If it's on the green area, then uh, everything is fine so the pressure is fine and the material is being held in place so you can also test that by using your own hands um, yeah and uh, yeah before we begin it's usually good to have an idea of what kind of design you want to have uh, what kind of design you want to mill you should be aware of uh, the dimensions of the material um, so you, sh you should have a uh, should know the thickness of a material and the width and the height of it and then uh, if we want to cut through the material then it's always necessary to use a sacrificial layer in our case we usually use MDF um, so this is a five millimeter MDF for a bigger material we, we might use a one millimeter thick MDF sheets and the good thing about MDF is that air flows through it and it means if we put this on top of the vacuum table like this and then on top of the sacrificial layer, the material, then it means that the air is going to flow through the uh, sacrificial layer and it's going to pull the material down. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open one of the vacuum vents here and I'm going to set up the vacuum table so we can attach the material. So since the material is small, relatively small, I'm just going to use one of the vacuum suction vents over here and I'm going to open it up like this. And uh, I need to use the rubber bands. So these ones, they cover just the area. There is a little bit smaller than the material dimensions. So first I'm gonna measure the height of it, like so. I think I'm gonna start somewhere here. And as we see, it fits perfectly on it. But first things first, we're gonna put the sacrificial layer on here, like so, and only then the material. Another thing is that now we should actually test whether the vacuum is pulling it down in a strong enough way, but that we are going to do after we learn how to turn on the machine. So here, so this one is the uh, control panel or the CNC machine controller. Uh, and it has 
uh, yeah, quite a lot of safety features over here. So multiple switches. So this is the main power switch. And we start here. So we turn it clockwise to the on position. And the red light should turn on. And just next to the red light, so it's, it's a light and a button at the same time, we see that there is a green button. We have to press that in order to turn the machine on. Nice. So now we wait for 15 seconds till the controller establishes connection with the computer. You can see the computer on, on top of the controller device over here. On the desktop, you should find the Mac 3 software and you should open it up as administrator like this. And uh, yeah, there's, you should choose the profile, but there's only one profile. You hit OK. And there are three main things that you should do before you uh, start working with the machine. And the first thing is to hit reset. The second thing is to check whether the soft limits are on. They might be gray like this. If they are gray, you should hit one more time and make, make it green. The outline should be green. So you should stay away from the machine before pressing reference or home button. So now I'm going to press the reference or home button and see what happens with the machine. Okay, and at this point we can use the arrow buttons to move it to the left, to the right, forward, and then page up and page down buttons on the keyboard in order to move it down or up. So at this point let's position it in a place where which is which would be comfortable for us in order to load the tool. Somewhere here is good. So we want to test whether the vacuum table is able to hold the material down strong enough. Yeah. Before we do that, we should get headphones. Ear protection headphones. The ear protection headphones. So this is the button you should press in order to activate the vacuum suction device. The next thing is to set up the tool. So in this, in, this, uh, in this case, we are just going to cut a simple circle or like any other geometrical form, so we can actually use any tool. And the tool that we used today uh, for, for another job was an eight millimeter tool. So again, so if you enter the CNC room, uh, you can see that there's this metal closet over here. Uh, and you can find uh, different things, the tools and all other uh, machine related parts in there. So in this bottom drawer, you can find the tools. We're going to take one that is an 8mm tool, so 8mm, two flutes, flat and tool on the table here. And for each tool uh, we need to know the diameter of the shaft and for each shaft diameter we also have these uh, collets or chucks. For an 8mm tool we are going to take an 8mm one, so it looks like this. You'll find uh, different things, so like a soft surface like this, which is good for mounting the tool. In, in case the tool drops, then it doesn't hit the hard, hard surface and it's less likely to break. Then we have these keys here. In order to mount the tool, uh, we need to remove this uh, nut over here. We need to insert the chuck and uh, you should use a little bit of force to fit it in place. So there's a clicking sound. And then you use both of your hands to attach it here. And you turn the nut clockwise like this and until a point insert the tool over here. And um, yeah, about how deep you should insert the tool into the chuck. So I usually look at uh, where the where the flutes end. So around the around the half uh, length of the tool, this is where the flutes end. And then the remaining distance, I usually uh, divide it in two parts. And uh, this is uh, approximately 1.5 centimeters uh, that you should usually consider uh, putting into the chuck. And then I use these two keys in order to adjust it properly. And here you should think in terms of squeezing a lemon. It should be enough to get most of the juice out. So remove the tools, uh, put them in a, some safe place. Uh, Probably not a good idea to keep them on the on the build platforms on the uh, bed of the CNC machine. Keep your uh, noise protection headphones somewhere close. You'll need a caliper. 
you will need also a measurement device. So, and the next thing is to use the uh, Mac 3 uh, control panel in order to uh, calibrate, in order to set the 0x, 0y, and 0z positions. And we'll start with uh, the 0x and y. So, in order to do that, use the arrow buttons to move the tool around like this. So, I'm going to lower it, put it closer to the material. Here. And I'm going to set it to the left, left closest position over here. And when this is done, then you go to the zero <coughs> X button and you hit it, and you will see that the X position is being uh, reset to zero. And you should do the same with the Y position. And in order to calibrate the Z axis properly, we are going to use a tool, this one over here. To put it somewhere on the material since we are going to set the z position to be on the top of the material and we need to put the tool in the pos in a position that it covers the measurement tool ultimately like this and in order to measure the the, the z uh, the z zero the zero z position correctly we will need to activate the vacuum pump and once that is activated then we will need to press this Teran Metals button which is the only finish button in the Mac 3 interface over here. As you see, the 0z position has been set to 17 millimeters, which is the height of the measurement tool plus one centimeter. Last thing before we uh, do the actual cutting is to actually move the tool upwards and attach the dust shoe like so. So a lot of dust and chips coming out from the pipes. The air gun. You go back to the desktop, then you should be able to find also the VCAR Pro icon. So this is a, a quick project with this one. So start with create new file. Then we are going to uh, do a single sided job. Then here for the job size, we sh you should enter the dimensions of the material that we are going to use. So which is 270 millimeters wide and 270 millimeters high. Measuring this. This is going to be 20.4 millimeters. So we are obviously using millimeters as units and uh, we are going to set the Z0 Z position uh, at the material surface. And for the XY, we are going to choose the left and uh, closest to us uh, position as, as uh, here. This personal preference and we hit OK. So let's make a simple circle. Let's set its uh, diameter 140. Let's go with 150 millimeters. Let's click somewhere in the center of the canvas. And let's close this. At this point, we can open the toolpath panel, which is located to the right. And we need to choose the profile toolpath. Uh, the depth uh, of the cut is going to be 20.4. 20 I'm going to add 2 millimeters, not 0.2 millimeters, so it's going to be 20.6. So we want to cut uh, a little bit through the material um, to make sure that it actually cuts through. So adding, so since the material thickness was 20.4, we're going to add 0.2 millimeters in order to cut through. The next step is to choose the end mill, so the tool. Uh, so here you should go to select and you can choose, choose from one of the available presets. So we are going to choose eight millimeter uh, tool. So I'm gonna not explain these uh, for now. I'm gonna cover these in a separate recar video. Okay. So we want to cut uh, the circle from outside. So the tool has a dimension. So the tool has a diameter. So if we cut along the line, then we are not gonna keep the dimensions of the object that we wanna cut. So we want to, uh, the tool actually to stay outside the 
dimensions of the object that we want to cut so we choose outside here uh, then we should add tabs tabs are important so that the final piece uh, during the last pass when the tool is is cutting the last uh, remains of the material so it doesn't doesn't fly away and uh, hit something or someone or, or the machine itself or uh, yeah break the tool so we go to edit tabs and uh, then interactively we can place some tabs here here and here really depends on how you're feeling about tabs here is or maybe you're able to make some calculations about that really depends on you then ramps are not important in this case uh the name yeah cutting with the eight millimeter tool and we can hit calculate and vcarve is going to warn us that we are trying to cut uh, a little bit too deep into the material uh, so basically the depth of the cut exceeds the thickness of the material but we are prepared so this is why this is why we're actually using a sacrificial layer so the sacrificial layer is five millimeters thick and it's going to prevent um, the g-code or, or the code to um, to guide the machine in a way that it cuts into the machine itself and we hit okay here and then we are into simulation mode so you can rotate and see how the two paths are going to actually look like we hit play it's going to show you how it's going to cut so the preview looks okay that's fine and we can close this panel and we can go back to 2D view and we can hit the save icon and uh, we should click this output all visible two paths to one file and uh, by being visible uh, it means that you have to check the two paths that you have generated here uh, you have to check this checkbox next to them and then you hit save two paths and the way we do it here at the fab lab is we go to desktop we create a new folder, your name, my name is going to be, ah, oh, there is a folder with my name, that's good. And uh, yeah, as you see, there are some jobs already here. I'm going to make a new folder for my project. And yeah, the name of the path that I set previously is already there. Hit save. And now when I go to desktop, uh, to my folder, and to the project folder, circle cut, then the text file actually is going to contain G-code for the machine. So this is G-code, don't be afraid of it. It's a really, it's actually quite human readable. So if you get a reference file and you find out what all these values and, and commands actually mean, um, then you can you can actually start writing one on your own but of course for complex paths and complex jobs so you could do it for a circle but you could if, if the design is more complicated then probably it's a good idea to use a software like vcarve or fusion 360 to generate those but here you can see that there's an x coordinate uh, which kind of instructs the machine to move to a certain x position and there's a y coordinate and and also a z coordinate over here oh no it is that coordinate I think is, is being set so somewhere here so it moves to a certain z height and then moves only the x and y axis okay that's that you can go back to uh, Mac 3 software and you can click on load G code over here and again you have to go to your folder go to circle cut uh, to the, your project name you select the the job that you're going to run you hit open and here on the left side of this window you will see the, the actual instructions and on the right side here in this window you're actually going to see uh, a little preview of the tool path we need to activate the vacuum in order to hold the material in place also in here don't forget these In order to start the job, you'll need to you'll need to go out of, out of the room, close the door, and then press this button next to the green light over here.
And that's it. Here we have our circle. And the first thing that you want to do after the job has finished, you want to wait till the spindle has stopped rotating and you want to enter the room and disable the vacuum system. And before doing that, always remember that you need to use your headphones. So yeah, and then we remove the material like this, remove the sacrificial layer. And as important it is to, to set up the machine safely, it is also important to unset up it. And in order to do that, it's always smart to move this to a safe place where you can actually remove the dust shoe. This one, and the soft surface again and these two keys so it's usually a good idea to keep them close like this so it is much easier to do the first heavy turn like this in a way that you do not damage your hands and at this point you can use your hands only to finish the removal of the tool then what you want you want to blow some dust out from this Then you use your thumb in order to push the collet out like this and you put it back uh, where it belongs and then here yeah, we put it in the drawer back like this and then for the tool we do the same we get the plastic box so it was here so we get the empty plastic box we take the tool we put it inside like this the plastic protection and we put it into the box that is full with tools already like this put it back in there here just put this uh, nut back here you can leave the tools over here like that and then back to mac3 interface what we need to do now is just close it yes yeah, so we want to end the session no we don't want to save the fixture add the machine so the machine controller again first thing to turn it off we need to hit the power off button like this and we need to wait until these numbers here are going to go up and down again like so there's gonna be a click and at this point we can turn the main switch to the off position we're done so we can clean up the room by using a vacuum cleaner and continue with post-processing the job so that was an introduction on how to set up the Recontec 1312 CNC machine at Alto Fab Lab. If you have suggestions or questions or anything, so you could leave some comments uh, below the video. So there's going to be some additional information about it. Uh, but otherwise, if you have more questions and you're interested in the more advanced stuff, just come to the lab and we are going to explain you everything. Thanks for watching.